we're here with the uh, 997 Porsche uh, Turbo, the uh, first gen car in black again. <laughs> we keep we keep on picking cars up in black out in the countryside at the moment. And uh, point out some of the details of this beautiful car. Right, I'll start with some of the some of the specs because they're pretty impressive with the 911 Turbo. 3.6 litre twin turbo. I'll show you that in a second. 620 newton meters of torque, which is amazing and 480 horsepower. Breton's nodding away because he's impressed. It weighs 1,588, so it's a bit heavier than the GT3, but it, uh, it feels really solid on the road and that weight doesn't seem to compromise how well it drives. All right, top speed, 311 kilometers an hour, which is uh, much more than license losing material. <laughs> and uh, 0 to 100 is 3.5 seconds, but I think for this one, this is actually a six speed manual, so not as quick because it does take obviously 0.2 of a second if you're very good at changing up a gear. Let's look at some of the details, it's got some really nice like what are they, are they halogen or no, they're xenon, aren't they? Yeah, xenon standard on the, on the turbo, I believe. And we've uh, LEDs, the turbo gets these LEDs down the, down the bottom, which are the driving lights. Um, Pretty nice, loads of cooling down here. You can see all through here. Radiators, oil, oil coolers, all kinds of things. And when you park the car up after a drive, it just seems to be turning fans on and off every second, just trying to cool itself down. It's an amazing view of this car. It really does look aggressive from the pumped up side arches there in the rear with an air intake for the engine. And of course, the 911 turbos have these amazing wheels, which everyone seems to buy for their 911s. Steal them off the turbo and put them on their 911s because they just look really, really good. Here's the cooling for or cooling for the engine, I believe, because the intake's up here. I might be wrong. The wind goes up and down. I think it's around 100 kilometers an hour. It automatically raises. So if you see a 911 with a wing up, it means they're probably speeding, going out the speed limit. More cooling down here. Radiators everywhere. This thing must get really hot when it's driving. Big fat, overly shaped exhausts. Not as impressive sounding as the Porsche GT3 driving, but uh, certainly a lot more welly. A lot more welly. It's beautiful. It's very aggressive. Here's the engine. So 3.6 litre twin turbo. Turbos are nestled down somewhere. Down in the corners I believe. One down there and one down there. Nicely specced out as you'd expect from a was it $360,000 Porsche and a range topper. The um, Porsche entertainment system which has got navigation, uh, telephone, uh, maps, you can even read your text messages off this if you put your sim card in. There's a little slot here you put your sim card in and you read your text messages off the display, off the display up here as well. Um, really good speaker system made by Bose. Some subs in the back on this particular one and generally the, the, you've got basically everything is standard on the range top of the turbo. This is an additional extra which is this chrono pack. It's a stopwatch. It, does, it looks like a clock, but it's actually a stopwatch. Digital readout in the middle, analog around the outside. They get stored. You can store many, many lap of data and upload them, and it stays in the uh, memory of the uh, navigation system here. I believe you can use a USB port or something and download those uh, those lap times, etc., and average lap times to your computer and fantasize as much as you want on, on Excel about those. Now down here is where we have the fun stuff. You can see this. These are some more of the fun buttons because we are driving a Porsche after all. Here you've got the rear spoiler button. You can press this and make you can make the rear spoiler manually go up and down. If I hold it down, it goes up. Yeah, we it go. Or you just leave it on automatic and it goes up and down depending on the speed. Then down here we have a little thing that looks like a whistle, as Brendan put it, 
but is uh, that is uh, PASM, which is basically Porsche Active Stability Management. So when you turn this on, the suspension gets really, um, really solid, which is basically Porsche say is more for like track driving and uh, very, very smooth roads. Turn it off, we're in normal mode. And with the suspension compared to the GT3, when you have this set in the harder setting, it's like a Porsche GT3 setting the softer setting. So the GT3 really, the suspension on the GT3 really is firm. Next we've got the sport button down here, and what that does is the, the boost pressure basically goes up to about three quarters on full boost from the twin turbos on this engine. When you press the sport button, it pretty much allows it to open all the way up to maximum boost. And yeah, so if you're going to be pushing it a bit harder on the track, you press the sport button. It doesn't actually make the exhaust get any louder, unfortunately, but yeah. Last button, PSM. Don't touch that. Basically turns traction control off, stability control, and you're going to end up with the pendulum effect and the back of the car going into a ditch somewhere. The practicality of the rear of the 911. There's a couple of little seats here that can be folded down. There's one side. And the other side. And then what it does is makes a little like kind of parcel shelf there which is cool for putting bags and things like that which is semi-practical and uh, of course you can have passengers in there as well as uh, the assistant will demonstrate now full-sized adult and you're not very comfortable are you? not really no look it's at the touching. there's a bit of a problem here it's a little bit of a problem so maybe with the cabriolet version you're gonna have a bit of headroom so how long till you have to send the chiropractor some bills over that one, you reckon? Probably about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That's not, that's not very uh, worthy. Depends who's driving. No. Okay. But there is other areas that passengers can go, of course, uh, within the car. You have the two front seats. These beauties, which are really comfortable. But also there is a uh, additional, additional storage in the front. Mostly used for bags, but uh, you can store passengers in here. A car for short journeys only. Is that right? Yeah, it's only short journeys. Yeah, is it a bit aerodynamic, unfortunately? And people will think that you have actually killed someone, and they are dead in front of your Porsche. Just like this person here, he's actually about to find a place right now. Master sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you, my peon slave. <laughs> May I now drive the car? Yes. We're just giving it the back. Good, you're going to be the seat.